let's talk about the latest camera releases and what they might mean for wildlife photographers. Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. It's a very exciting time right now for camera releases. Canon released the EOS R5 and R6, and recently Sony released the A7S III, and I want to talk about all of these cameras in this video. Now, I already did share my thoughts about the EOS R5, and it was interesting to see the reaction to that video, because I thought I was quite positive about the camera, uh, although I did explain why it, I thought it wasn't for me, although I'm still very interested in getting my hands on one to test. And overall, the, the reaction to that video was positive, but there were still a few people who were quite negative. And uh, I do applaud the, the passion for particular cameras or systems or camera companies, but sometimes the behavior is uh, a little puzzling. And it's not even so much on my videos, but I've, I've noticed on other people's videos, on reviews about the R5 uh, or in forum discussions, that some people get a little bit silly about this and, and there's name calling and insulting and a little bit over the top uh, so anyway it, like um, you know f for me I'm, I'm just trying to be very objective about it I don't have any allegiance to any particular camera company uh, I've shot a lot of systems in the past even though I, I currently shoot mostly Sony I'm also happy to be shooting a, uh, with a kit that that has uh, cameras from from different different companies and uh, it's it's not necessarily a case of what is better or worse but but what works for you and, and what works for your style of, of photography so enough about my rant of, of the fanboyism, but yeah, I do, I do think it's uh, I do think it's a little silly sometimes, and I and I make these videos just to share my thoughts, and I, I hope that 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 you find them them helpful. So with the R5 and the R6, uh, we're now seeing uh, some of the testing happening as it's, the cameras have been getting into people's hands, and I think the thing that's most interesting that I want to highlight in this video is the autofocus that we're seeing and specifically Canon's advanced animal autofocus. And if you look at some of the videos, you'll see a few things. One is that it, it appears that the uh, subject detection of the animals moves quite fluidly between detecting the eyes and the head and the body. It also appears to work quite well in low light and it also seems to be very good. I think this is the most impressive thing. It seems to be very good at detecting subjects even when the body or the head or the eyes are very small in the frame. So how was Canon able to, to do this? How were they able to get the performance of this to be so good? Well, there's a few things that, that I can think of. One is that uh, in the these new cameras, they have a, a processor, the Digic X processor, which is not new. It's the same processor that they released in the uh, 1DX Mark III. Now, I did make a video a while back about computational photography, and I talked a little bit about subject detection and about processing power in cameras. And uh, for sure, I think that that is one of the, the enablers of, of performance, and it's certainly one of the, um, one of the, 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 the gating factors when the performance is not so good in, in, in some cameras. The other thing that, that's interesting is if you look at the R5 and the R6 uh, and you look at the number of autofocus points in those cameras, it's quite substantially higher than the auto number of autofocus points in, say, the A92 or the A7R4. So I think if you think about the processor, the processing power, the, the, the number of autofocus points, and also improvements in the software and the algorithms, uh, all of those things add up to, to how they were able to do this. Now this raises the question as to what Sony is going to do now in, in response. And I think, especially for, for people who are Sony shooters now, uh, more specifically, will Sony be able to uh, match that, that capability that we're seeing in the R5 and the R6 in firmware updates? And I think hope that they will uh, release some firmware updates to improve the performance of the animal IAF but I also think that it will take some new hardware some new cameras with more processing power and more autofocus points for us to really see them match what Canon uh, have done that's what I think is the case now I should say also 
in all of this that as I've said in a number of videos before, I do use animal eye autofocus in the Sony cameras, uh, but I don't rely on it entirely. It, I consider it a bonus uh, because it, uh, it's never foolproof. And I've seen also, by the way, in, in some of the R5 and R6 uh, videos that I've seen that the Canon, uh, the advanced animal autofocus also has some of the same problems or some of the same examples where it fails uh, like the Sony uh, animal eye autofocus does. And sometimes it, it mistakes something for the eye uh, or it just fails to detect it. Although, as I mentioned, with, with what I'm seeing with the R5 and the R6, it does seem to fall back quite well uh, to the head or the body of the animal and then to jump back to detecting the eye or back to detecting the head if it can see those things. And that, that's the part about it that I think is, is, is quite, quite good. Let's talk about the A7S III. So the A7S III is a camera that uh, I think most wildlife photographers, still shooters at least, are probably not going to be interested in because it only has 12 megapixels. Now there is the, the idea that if you were happy with 12 megapixels that you could get the A7S III and get some great uh, images in low light. And I do a lot of low light shooting for wildlife photography uh, but the thing is, you have to remember that with the A7S cameras, uh, although we see very impressive footage, low-light video footage, the difference between the video footage from, say, an A7S III and the video footage of an A7R IV, that difference is going to be much greater than the difference that we would see between stills from those two, two cameras. If you were to take a 60 megapixel image from the a7r4 or or even a 24 megapixel from the a92 and if you downsample it to be 12 megapixels like that of the a7s3 uh, you won't see as much of a difference as you would with the video uh, footage between the two cameras where they're doing some additional noise reduction they're doing temporal noise reduction uh, because they have different frames in the video to to work with now it is true, however, that the from what we've seen with some of the testing of the A7S III, it does appear that it has dual gain ISO and the dynamic range appears to be greatest at ISO 80 and ISO 16,000. And that is interesting because we know that with the A7R4, uh, for example, it's uh, the dynamic range is greatest at ISO 100 and ISO 320. And with the other Sony full frame cameras, it's ISO 100 and ISO 640. So ISO 16,000, which is a huge number, to be able to get a lot of dynamic range up there, that's, that's, that's great. But I still think for the most part that because the A7S III only has 12 megapixels, a lot of people won't be interested in it for stills shooting for wildlife photography. However, and the reason why I'm talking about it in this video is I do believe it is an interesting camera to look at in terms of what we might expect to see in the future with future Sony full-frame camera releases. One of the things that's interesting about the A7S III is they have a new processor in their camera, the Bionz XR processor. And Sony are saying that this is eight times faster than the Bionz X processor that we've seen in previous Sony full-frame cameras. So that processor, if it was to come to other uh, future cameras, could help to enable uh, improved performance with subject detection and, and autofocus. Another thing that's really interesting in the A7S III is they have these new card slots for the memory cards. And those slots can take either UHS-2 SD cards, which we're used to, uh, but they can also take CF Express Type A cards. And if you look at the read and write speed of CF Express Type A, it's more than twice as fast as UHS-2 cards. This is particularly interesting because we know that with the A7R4, that camera has a very high resolution sensor, 60 megapixels, and that's great. Uh, but one of the downsides is that it can take a while to clear the buffer. So if we had faster cards that would help to clear the buffer faster, that would be fantastic. Another thing that's related to this, one of the frustrations that we see with the A7R4 uh, as with all Sony cameras uh, until the A7S III is that when the buffer has images in it and it's still clearing, although you can keep adding to the buffer and keep shooting into the buffer, uh, if there's space there, 
you can't do a lot of other things. You can't, for example, flip in and out of crop mode. You can't go into the menus and make changes. You're sort of locked, uh, locked out for a while, and that, that can be frustrating. Well, with the A7S III, they have a brand new user interface, brand new menu system, and you can now uh, make changes uh, while the buffer is clearing, and that's fantastic. So seeing both the faster cards and, uh, and that new sort of multitasking capability uh, come to, to future cameras, that would, be, that would be amazing. Another thing that's really interesting uh, with the A7S III is they have a new electronic viewfinder. It has a 9.44 million dot viewfinder with a 0.9 magnification. If you compare that to the viewfinder in the uh, A7R4, which has a 5.76 million dot viewfinder with a 0.78 magnification, which already is quite good, uh, but uh, imagine being able to, especially with the A7R4, where you have those really high uh, resolution images, imagine being able to see even more clearly the detail uh, with an even higher resolution viewfinder. That, that could be really, really cool. So these are some of the features in the A7S III that get me quite excited because if you think about the possibility that these will come to future camera releases, uh, it's it's pretty exciting. Now, of course, this brings up the question of when we might see some of these these new new cameras. So I took a look at the uh, release dates of some of the the cameras, and I theorized what we might possibly see. So. This is, these are just my guesses in terms of future camera releases. With the A9 cameras, the A9 II was only just released in November of 2019. So it sort of seems like it's unlikely that we would see a A9 III in 2021. One influencing factor could be that the delayed 2020 Olympics are now scheduled for July 2021. And it's possible, perhaps, that Sony might use that uh, to as an opportunity to release a new A9 camera with substantial new capabilities before uh, the Olympics, in time for the Olympics. The only thing about that, I think, is that there are a number of people who bought the A9 II and were somewhat disappointed because the upgrades weren't that substantial over the A9. And if they were to then bring out an A9 III, uh, that rendered the A9 II uh, as uh, no longer the current model uh, of, of that camera, I think there would be some people who would be not very happy, me included. So I think it's unclear what might happen there with the A9 III. Now, if we look at the A7 cameras, it's been a while since we've seen a release of the, of the A7 III. So it's quite possible that we would might see the release of an A7 IV sometime later this year. Now it's with the A7R cameras that I'm most excited about and I shoot with two A7R4s and, and also an A9 II. Uh, and if you look at these release dates of the A7R cameras, you'll see they're being pretty consistent in terms of how often they, they release a new A7R camera. And so we could possibly see a A7R5 in sometime in 20. 21. So all of this is pretty exciting. Of course, it's just all conjecture right now, just uh, guessing a little bit. Uh, but uh, I'm very excited to see, firstly, the capabilities in the R5 and the R6, which I think uh, will challenge Sony to step up a little bit with the uh, Animal Eye autofocus. And I think that uh, they've already released some great new features in the A7S III. We, we can expect those to come to future uh, releases of the A7, A7R cameras, and the A9 cameras. So it's all pretty exciting. I hope you found this video helpful and uh, enjoyable, and I hope you've been able to get out and uh, do some photography recently. As always, if you have any thoughts or would love to hear from you, feel free to comment below or jump on over to the Discord server if you'd like to have a extended discussion. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.